Okay, guys, so let's finish up uh, 3.4. The next thing in 3.4 that we're going to talk about is the uh, linear... factorization theorem. Now, pretty much simply stated, the linear factorization theorem says that uh, whatever whatever the degree of the polynomial function then that is how many roots or many how many solutions roots zeros that the polynomial function will have Okay, now notice they don't have to be real roots. Um, they're just going to have four roots. This could be, they could have four real roots. They could have no real roots. They could have four complex roots. Okay, uh, so we want to say roots may be real or complex. But here's one thing that's going to help you out. If, if we have the complex root of A plus BI, then we will also have the complex root of a minus bi okay okay now we can use these roots um to create slash produce a corresponding polynomial. So let's look at, uh, let's see, where are we at? We are on 25. So we're going to call this, I guess, example two, because I think I rolled all those into example one. Yep. So let's look at example two. And this does start with number 25. It says, find an nth degree polynomial function. with real coefficients satisfying the given conditions. Okay. Um, use it, that's not if I will, okay. So let's look at number 25. It says, we have, we want an nth root of three, so we need a cubic function. Um, then it says one and five i are zeros, okay? And f of negative 1 
equals negative 104. Oh, well, it's going to be a little mess. Okay, so I have pretty much what it's given me is x equals 1. I know this. And I know that x equals 5i. Now, x equals 5i is imaginary, which means its complex is just 0 plus or minus 5i. So if I have x equals 5i, I also know that one of the solutions is x equals negative 5i. Because if they give you the imaginary or the complex number, that means the both the negative and the positive have to be there. Now, what were these before? They were set equal to 0. So if I move it back over, I really have x minus 1 equals 0. Um, over here... I'm subtracting the 5i, so I've got x minus 5i equals 0. And over here, I have, if I add 5i, I get x plus 5i equals 0. Okay? Well, I'm going to take these two right here, and I'm going to boil those together first. Because what you're really doing is now we're looking for what the equation was before I got the solutions. So this was really x minus 1 times x minus 5i times x plus 5i. And we had that set equal to 0. Now, those weren't really 5i's. Those were probably really some 25's going on there. Okay, it was probably x plus 25, something like that. But we're going to find out. So, let's multiply these two together first. I'm going to leave the x minus 1 by itself. And I'm going to foil these other two. So, I get x squared plus 5i minus 5i. Whoops, sorry. x plus 5ix. Okay. x squared plus 5ix minus 5ix minus 25i squared. All equals 0. That's going to give me x minus 1. Those middle terms are going to cancel. Remember, what does i squared stand for? That's times negative 1 equals 0. So this is x minus 1, and this becomes x squared plus 25. Okay? Now, that looks more normal there. All right, now let's go ahead and foil this. If I foil this, this is x cubed plus 25x minus x squared minus 25, right? So all together, I've got x cubed minus x squared plus 25x minus 25 equals 0. Okay, but here's the kicker. We know that f of negative 1 has to equal negative 104. So that means if I plug negative 1 in here, okay, um, do I want to say that? Find an nth degree polynomial function with real coefficients. If I had, um, if that x cubed, we don't know what was in front of that x cubed to start with. Okay? We know that has to equal zero, but then we also know that's not going to help me. 